Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome morning. back to the next uh, satsang and uh, guided meditation. And it's awesome, awesome, awesome seeing your lovely, friendly faces this morning. <laughs> it's enough to brighten my the rest of my week. So let's just do a quick check-in and we'll start with Mickey. Hi, morning, everyone. Um... Yeah, it's been a good week. I took Friday off, so just, you know, did my own thing. Um, Wednesday, as you know, I had a very um, nervous, like a, almost a breakdown day, but thanks to your chakra balancing Wednesday evening, that really helped. So, yeah, grateful. Yeah, good week. Mm. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. Um. Let's move on to Anita. Anita. Hi, morning all. I'm well, thanks. Um, yes, nothing much to report. Good space. <laughs> Looking forward to Satsa. Thank you. Good. <laughs> uh, Granisha. Hey, everyone. Um, pretty good week. Just been doing more meditation, more yoga, and renovating my room here. So, yeah. A new project. <laughs> Renovating a room. Awesome. 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 Next. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm still in a, in a good space. Um, I could probably use a little bit of uh, motivation and or anti-procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> the assistant. I'm laughing because I can totally resonate. <laughs> Yeah, but no, otherwise I'm good, thanks. Good, good. Nikki? Uh, good, um, had quite a busy week, uh, work-wise, house-wise. So, yeah, good. Good, because it was quite productive. Awesome. Glad to hear. Barbara? Um, okay, I had a very lazy week, I've got to say. Mm. A bit like Nikki, I, I needed a bit of motivation <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, uh, I left the house for the first time in 10 days. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been going out, you know. So, um, but I just suddenly felt I couldn't stand the sight of my house any longer. So <laughs> I left. Um, <laughs> You know, it can get a bit much. I mean, it's not a bad house. It's a nice garden and everything, but it just can get a bit much. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just went to the shops. and Yeah, very lazy, very boring kind of week, really. Yeah. I've sort of run out of projects as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can totally relate to this week. I think it's been my most unproductive week. Um since this lockdown uh, I thought okay Monday I'm going to do stuff Monday came and gone no okay Tuesday no energy okay Wednesday so Wednesday I did the chakra balancing that was my productive part then I thought okay now Thursday I'm going to do what I need mm, yeah. and then I thought okay now Friday was my only day that I had energy and also uh, like you I thought okay I need to get out of the house um Shopping is um, is now a, a called for excursion <laughs> to just uh, do something uh, different and see the outside world and um, have at least uh, groceries for the next week. And then um, Saturday, I thought, okay, no. Saturday, I just to spend day, the day playing with paint and um, just being like childlike, just uh, just having fun. I thought, okay, now today at least I'm doing something productive again. <laughs> but yeah, so I can totally relate with the unproductive energies. Uh, my, the, as, as if the energies was l lower or slower or... Because um, I, I'm, I'm very much, I'm in tune with it. I, if, it's, if it's a doing day, then I do plenty. And if it's a non-doing day... So yeah. like, a part of me felt like, should I feel guilty for not being productive or doing something? And I thought, no. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's what it is. And um, that's and that's also okay. Because there, there will be other times uh, that we do other things. And um, 
and it's okay. Um, we don't we don't have to be superstars every day. Sometimes by just just coasting along is 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 is, is also good. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome, welcome everyone. Okay, so yesterday when I connected to, with our group energy, I asked to go spirit for a divine message for us all. Uh, so I drew it from um, the Psychic Terror Oracle deck. Um, uh, that one said it's got a message for us. And the one that I drew is uh, this one. Um, I hope you guys can see it. So it is a number six card and it is a material and spiritual prosperity. So we had to, the new moon on Friday where I sent through um, the various things and affirmations that you can do over the new moon. So when uh, the moon is full, it's like when our bucket is full, our cup is full, we need to empty things out and let things go and uh, to create space for new to come in. And when the new, when the moon is new and dark, it's like fertile soil, the, um, ready for our planting the seeds, um, doing what we need to do to focus on what we want to create forward. So it's interesting that um, this card has come up because it says uh, uh, material and spiritual prosperity. The number six physical card represents peaceful, tranquil time when problems seem to actually disappear. Uh, a sudden bonus or pay rise or even um, promotion could be on the offering. Um, it uh, could be expected or arrive out of the blue. This card also may signify a group uh, that has worked and strived towards um, the success of a common goal. A time of prosperity, balance, and harmony in your physical and spiritual uh, existence is uh, showing you that the practice of giving and receiving will bring you true riches. Look into your life and see where you can spread spiritual and physical wealth. It, um, is there a person or a favorite charity that uh, you would w that will help come welcome an act of kindness? right now practice generosity gratitude and compassion so that you can continue to prosper uh, prosper in all areas of your life so that is your message for today this week and i must say the own the the one day that i i can't remember which was a feeling day or emotional day i think it was uh, thursday maybe it was uh, just before the new moon. It um, was a day of processing, and um, what I, what where I got into was to see how much support there actually is, how much love uh, there actually is, how much um, I realized uh, that my physical needs are taken care of, my emotional needs are taken care of, my spiritual needs are taken care of, my financial needs are taken care of by spirit. Whatever things come in, it's able to sustain me. So, and I, I just dropped into the great sense of gratitude um, for, um, for sometimes when we think there's little, there's actually lots. And then when we look at the lots, we realize, oh, okay, I'm actually so blessed. I am so blessed. Um, I have my sister working on my website. I've got... Um, Sylvia, that helps me with some of the video things. Um, so I keep on seeing how spirit just support, 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 support. If I put these things out, you guys respond. So then I get all excited because um, I love the participation. I love the interaction. Um, I love uh, connecting on a weekly basis. Um, so yes, all I can say is gratitude. And when we when we share this, uh, get the, the, that which we are grateful for, and we then give whatever we can to those around us, so it just makes us feel more living a fulfilling life, um, doing whatever we can in whatever way we can, even if it's just love, loving your dog, or just being a support, or whatever you give, 
to others around you or or from your heart or just a message each each act of kindness counts each act of kindness or reaching out um is is, is so beautiful and important and uh, that is where we actually make deposits in our spiritual bank account and it comes back whatever we do and give out and focus on comes back so anyone no one to share anything about the message or significance or what you understand of it would you like to participate in it okay so it is uh, to know that the, there is material and spiritual prosperity ahead for all of us. Um, if we think it is, then it is. If we think it isn't, then it isn't. So um, just watch your thinking. I was uh, g g on the new moon, I was um, contemplating, I could say, how, how beautiful can I imagine my life to be? Uh, what else would I like to participate at or have in that? And there's uh, some... I want to say lost dreams or lost hopes or lost things. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm not going to um, uh, focus on that. But then I thought, oh, okay, now there's, there's so much pos uh, potentials and possibilities um, for, for us. And it's just uh, to make sure that we get our headspace right and uh, keep focused on, on that because it's available. Alrighty. Okay. So the reading of that, um, I chose uh, from uh, the uh, Quran parable so this morning is um, it's uh, the number seven. So we had card number six and we have uh, uh, parable number seven. So the parable number seven is all about the, the two groups of warriors. Uh, Quran speaks about um, the two groups of warriors in this parable. So he says, uh, this is a short, um, little parable and one of my favorites. Uh, the uh, much is hidden here regarding what we are supposed to do with the gifts of God in the new age. So it seems uh, that there the were two groups of warriors uh, on a certain um, place uh, on the planet. Each grew, each group grew um, new of the new age gifts of God. Um, in this new age um, and each group comprised the uh, uh, warriors of the light which we all are they understood the uh, their contract and knew that there the were dark forces at work and would like to prevent them from completing their personal goals so they called on God for the gifts of the, the new energy and each warrior received his package as requested each package uh, um, given to the warrior was personal, and each contained three items, a sword, a shield, and uh, some body armor. The sword represented truth and could never be broken. Truth is pure. And uh, the sword was also offering uh, a perfect defense against uh, the deceptions of the dark ones. The shield represented knowledge, knowledge of uh, the weakness of the enemy and knowledge from eons uh, of um, archives from uh, the ancients. No energy could uh, penetrate the shield. Uh, since uh, knowledge voided out secrets and conspiracy. Secrets and conspiracy cannot exist in the light of knowledge. Uh, for they depend on the dark place of ignorance for their power. The body armor represents the mantle of the spirit of God. This was uh, the wisdom of uh, spiritual awareness and gave humans uh, their enablement as uh, the pieces of God uh, that they are. Therefore, it represents the, the wisdom of God in all things, especially the wisdom to wield the truth and hold up the knowledge in the, the face of attack. Now, 
came to be uh, that indeed uh, there was a, um, a coordinated attack by the dark forces. Both groups of light warriors um, felt uh, they were ready and uh, they quickly turned uh, to the powerful gifts to ward off the enemy. As uh, the dark forces closed in, the first group opened uh, the packages uh, and uh, start, stared at the contents with disbelief. Everything was in parts. There was a manual with a note that said, some assembly required. They couldn't uh, begin uh, to get ready in time uh, to meet uh, the enemy. And so the group of warriors uh, was quickly overrun and was defeated at the, the hands of those uh, who would control them. They became bitter and uh, believed that, that God had pricked them into the false hope and sense of security. Oddly enough, even after defeat, they still had the packages, but uh, they thought the tools were useless. The other group had opened their packages long ago. They had put their tools together early and uh, they practiced with them. It was a good thing that they did for they found the sword to be almost too swift in the, the hand, um, to handle properly. They found that the shield too had many options and they had um, a difficult time knowing exactly how to hold it. And they found that the body armor was heavy indeed. With practice and meditation, they eventually learned how to balance everything and they were ready. They realized uh, that no single tool worked without all of them being engaged. The body armor, the closest thing to their skin, uh, was uh, the key, for it somehow gave them the wisdom to control the sword and the shield. Indeed, the, the shield was used in many modes depending on uh, the situation, and the sword was easily controlled when the shield was used appropriately. When the attack came, the enemy took one look at this enabled force and fled. The battle was non-existent and the warriors rejoiced in their victory. There was no showdown, no wounds, and uh, no, one, uh, yeah, no one suffered any wounds. So the author's sp uh, postscript. There are some very special people who continue to wait, or very spiritual people who continue to wait um, for God to do something for them. When they need healing, they ask God to do it. And uh, they hope and hope and hope. When they wish to have situations around them change, they ask God to do it, and they wait, and they wait, and they wait. This continue, uh, comes uh, uh, squarely from the fact that this is uh, the way it used to work, and uh, the old scriptures shows it. In fact, uh, the story of Moses um, exemplifies uh, this fact. God did everything. And Moses and his people were instructed uh, to go where they were told to. Um, from plagues uh, to planting, uh, to parting waters, uh, to um, carving instructions in stone. Everything was done by God. Even when uh, the Israelites were wandering through in the desert, God fed them daily, uh, dropping food from heaven. This was the old energy. Uh, before a time when we as humans were given the permission to carry a greater energy and ability. When uh, the great Jewish master of love, Jesus, walked our earth, he was uh, the messenger who gave uh, us uh, the word that everything was changing. The age of God's love 
was upon us. He spoke of the spiritual gifts and showed them to us. He gave wonderful lectures, performed great miracles, showed a fisherman how to walk on water, and even spoke the words, you can be just like me. His message was clear. We were newly enabled spiritual creatures and creators, um, if we choose to be, with powers uh, from the love source itself. Now, we find ourselves crowding uh, the millennium and uh, more gifts are, are begin, being given to us uh, because, as Crian tells us, we have uh, earned them through this age of love, in this age of love. Um, even now, however, there are, the, there are those who feel the old ways of waiting for God to do everything are still in effect, but uh, they are not. In the new energy, we are asked to co-create our reality. Co-creation requires two entities, that is the co-part. It requires a cooperation between the God source and the God portion of the human called the higher self. We are absolutely required to learn the new ways of working spiritually in the new energy of this planet. The doom and gloom predictions of Nostradamus will come and go, and many will realize that Kran was correct. We are in a brand new paradigm for the earth. And as we sail past the time when everything was supposed to end, we'd better start understanding how to contribute spiritually to the entire scheme and find uh, the uh, decided ways uh, to uh, designed ways to work with God and make this planet a grand place. Those who do not will be disappointed and they will not understand what happened. Learn about the gifts. Pick up the package uh, and use it. Understand how truth, knowledge, and wisdom work together to give you greater power in this new age. The end. Okay, so Grant keeps on um, referring to these tools because they are powerful. Why would he keep on repeating certain things, a parable after parable, if it wasn't important. So it's for us to really get what it means. Um, uh, this week, sometime, uh, my dad sent me a, one of these video clips uh, that were talking about um, all these conspiracy things. And he said, what do you think? What do you think? And my response to him was actually, uh, that's an interesting point of view. Um, all I know I need to do is just anchor more light and anchor more light and anchor more light. Because ultimately, the more light that we anchor, the truth will be revealed. The truth has to come up. There has to be, um, it, it, dark things can't exist while when we bring in more light. So I don't care actually what agendas are of others or what. I know what I can do and what I can take responsibility for. And it's just the light that I bring. And the more light we are and the more light we bring and the more light we do, it affects uh, our life, it affects uh, those around us. And then ultimately we anchor it through these crystalline grids and there's more. And it's just so powerful. It is uh, to know that we have the sword of truth and the truth will set us free. And whoever we come in, in contact with, we can call forth that. The shield of, uh, of knowledge. And then the, the, the armor of wisdom. 
we can tap into higher knowing where we get to know things without knowing how we know things. But it's there. We all have these abilities. It's not just certain spiritual groups or certain spiritual sects or just the higher spiritual people that have this. As the Quran said, each one of us has been given these gifts. It wasn't uh, God has favorites and only picked certain ones uh, that have as this gift and you have to go to those special ones uh, that got the gift because um, God forgot about you. Um, you weren't important enough to give you those gifts as well. Um, so it's, a, it's and what he describes in how we can tap into that and how we can start mastering that, how we can understand how to wield it um, in our life, in circumstances, in all that is through meditation, through connecting, because we need to connect to that inner source of who we are and uh, work with spirit. When we go on ego tangents or do things of, from a negative mind or a lower ego or that, things don't always work out so um, pretty. But when we connect and we ask for divine guidance, and okay, so if this is for our, my highest good, if this is for the highest good of my environment now, for the people that I'm surrounded with, let it be so. And then you support it. When, when you walk into the direction that you need to walk in, when you do the things that you need, to, there is just so much support. It's when you're doing something that go, that's, um, that's not, and then sometimes you hit a brick wall. But it's to use the meditations to understand, oh, okay, so what does that represent? Where can I, what am I not getting? Um, so yeah, anyone else would like to, Add what they got from the parable this morning. No? Okay. Barbara? No, I was just thinking, you know, it's, 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 I just feel so sorry for people who haven't realized their power and haven't realized their, um, their ability to co-create with God. You know, it's, it's, it must, well, I know, because I used to be like that, the old world <laughs> like that. And, and I'm just so grateful now that something has opened up and I'm understanding, you know, eventually something opened up and, and I realized these things and I just, there's so much um, fear and there's so much density and it's, it's, and it's really sad, you know, what's going on around us at the moment. And as you say, the conspiracy theories certainly don't help, but I think, and you can read them. I mean, I read David Icke and, and that sort of thing, and it, it sounds hopeless until you realize that consciousness is the only thing that is going to make the difference. Yes. And if only everyone could suddenly become conscious, and what, what would it take, you know, to make everybody become conscious, I wonder? <laughs> you see, it, it, it takes us to become conscious yeah, and to remain conscious. Because it's easy when you're amongst lots of unconscious people to fall for that and to act from that become unconscious and uh, oh okay yeah we are being controlled oh dear me we have to fear all this that we are on oh, yeah. <laughs> it is to be able to i want to say yes you can listen to it but it must deflect and reflect from your auric field it mustn't consume you mustn't feel overpowered by that or um uh, or um uh uh it, that it's something that you fear because then you you give it power you must still be able to stand in in your truth in in your light in uh, knowing your own core truth and then okay and it's it's maybe just your calm response that awakens something within them oh you're mm. not fearing why are you not fearing um and then when you just so uh, cool and calm and collected and uh, you're not affected by it 
it that that subtlety makes a difference because it makes a, it goes into that and I think how can you be calm amongst this? Uh, there's things that you need to now fear, or there's a, you need to fear this control, or you need to fear this, or you, and it's like by you keep on saying no, you're showing others how to say no, how to stand in the light, how to bring consciousness, and it's uh, we don't have to do much by just being it, but by being conscious, uh, we are holding the the energy for others to, to awaken and to become conscious. We don't have to become evangelists and say, hey, although sometimes it might be nice to just shake some people, <laughs> but hey, uh, <laughs> consciousness is available <laughs> on the taking. Uh, anyone want? Anyone want? <laughs> a big there and just open the top of their heads. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. it's in our subtlety. It's in, in the just the uh, just just the, the energy that we carry. That um, by going to the shops, by sharing a smile, we go, go, our energy. Uh, I want to say our energy walks before us. It, it, it it's it's carried a, around us, and it does affect others. Um, it's it's through the subtle ways that, that we affect more than um, the old ways of. You have to listen to me. I know the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help, you know, whatever. And it's a, it's 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 not. It's um, it's just to. I'm gonna say tap into that, connect with it, and then just radiate it. That's all. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is just radiate it. It's not to. Okay, I, I I tend to move away from the things of where you feel. Um, sorry for others or whatever, because it means uh, that they are not there or not getting it. For me, I know everyone has the potential. So everyone has it within them. And it's, uh, it's to hold uh, that potentiality that they can awaken as, 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 uh, as, uh, um, as an offering. It's, it's to empower, to know that they have the power to wake up. And whenever they choose to, they can. Um, and, and if it's on their path, they will. And it might just be because you thought they can, that they then can. Because some people don't know that it's available. It's like, um, I was speaking to someone uh, last night and I, I said, um, uh, one of the ladies that uh, um, came to the course a few years ago, in her meditations, she would always uh, sit by a, um, a, a stone building and it was sort of barren land. There was not much greenery and there was never a soul around. She was always alone. And that's how she did meditation for a long time. And in her first meditation with me, she actually, there was a greenery and there was a, the forest to get developed, so light came in. And I connected her with the guides and she saw her guides. And since then, this is now for the past three years, in every meditation, she's always surrounded by those, uh, um, those beings and they keep on communicating with her. But it's like while she was at the belief system of I'm alone, I have no support and I have to fend and fight for myself and do it alone, um, that was her reality. And then just uh, by one experience, uh, her reality and her experiences was different. And now she can see the support. So sometimes it's just, just to make people aware of other possibilities. It's, 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 it's like some will think that the card that I read this morning is, um, oh, wow, yeah, really. <laughs> don't you know in what times we are? This is where people struggle. This is where people don't have work. This is where people don't um, make it. And this is um, thinking of the negative. It's, it's uh, like uh, uh, Pat came for a session and uh, he just reminded me of the, that uh, white page with a dot. And then they ask, okay, so look at the paper. What do you see? And everybody looks at the dot. And uh, this, when I say uh, this situation or some of the negative experiences of this is just the dot on the page. But we still have this whole potentiality of a blank page in front of us that we can 
co-create with spirit exactly what we want. Because we don't necessarily have to just think and just look at that little black dot, uh, at the limitations of the thinking of all that I cannot do is just that dot. But all that I can do is that whole blank page that can be filled um, and filled beautifully. So it's, 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 we are so many times reminded that we need to be careful of our thoughts because our thoughts carry energy. And our, our, our thoughts can either take us to feel sorry for ourselves or our thoughts can empower us and we can uh, um, create a total different reality. So it's to know that they have the potential to wake up. They have the gifts within them. And it might just be to remind them. And... Uh, it's, 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 it's not to convince them, just a subtle planting a seed of rem reminder. So like it's on everybody's path then to, to, to awaken. Gran, in one of the books that I read, he said there's enough books, people, courses. <sighs> okay, he didn't say YouTube videos, but I can now add YouTube videos. <laughs> out there so that each human can awaken and become enlightened there's enough information if you if you, there's so many pathways that you can follow um if it is uh, this person that is uh, far this side if it's this person that's far this side or if it's uh, someone in the middle or whoever you find inspiration from that you can listen to that it awakens um it's like, uh, like that one um message that I sent out on the, on the portal group. Um, let me just get it quickly. Uh, where, as I said, uh, the, uh, the rules of being um, human handed down to, from the ancient Sanskrit, where it says you will receive a body with it. Uh, we chose our body types. Uh, you will learn lessons, and that we do. And it's not to try and Mm. live a life where you don't have to or you okay i'm quickly going to learn this as Grant says uh, some lessons that we take lifetimes to learn so it's to really take our time with it and really see it for what it is not to try and um hasten the process uh really get to the dip, uh, grips of it and then uh, there are no mistakes and that's our mistakenly thinking sometimes because we think that the actions that we've taken or the jobs that we've done or the projects that we have that haven't um, uh, manifested in uh, fruitful ways or in uh, whatever, then we think, oh, we made a mistake. But it wasn't a mistake. We needed to go through that because it learned, it taught us how to be more vigilant or how to look out or how to react the, the next time or to clear um, comic ties with those individuals and then just write it off but it's a, so it's it's to understand that there's only lessons and we keep on learning and it's a, like what can I learn from this what was the, the experience teaching me um, what was the experience liberating me from how was I before this experience and how am I after this experience it's to see the difference because there is a difference. We keep on changing and that's fantastic. We have to um, become more conscious. So we must be grateful for all the negative experiences or apparently negative experiences, which yes. teach us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That is equal, equally grateful for the, what we think is positive experiences and what we think is the negative experiences because we need the yin yang experience. We need the duality. That brings balance into our life. Because they say the ones that, that has the most difficult um, experiences in, the, in, in, in this um, life that we can get to experience on earth is the ones that, that are just given everything. Okay, like you think a, a prince or a king or queen or whatever, they just they have the best life because everything is given to them. They have difficulty because they don't necessarily have so many challenges. They don't have to. They don't have to face what you need to face. They don't have to experience what you need to experience. So um, it takes them 
longer and more lives to get to, through certain experiences. So it is to understand that, that in life, there's balance when there's equal amount of support and challenge. And it's not to think of the challenge, oh. <laughs> what else, why? It is to say, okay, so if I have this challenge, it means that I have equal support for this challenge. And it's to then look at wh where the support is. If we keep on looking at the challenge, we keep on looking at that little black dot. We just see the challenge. But we don't see the support of spirit or uh, the, of the humans around us or of uh, how things, I mean, we sometimes get to situations where you think, okay, this is the end of me. I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. And then we do. Um, miraculously, we do. We are still alive. We still eat. We still go through go through life. So it's not to stare ourselves blindly in that experience and think that was that was just that. It's like okay, okay, I, I, I can I can I can see now that I've survived that and survived another another experience and survived another experience. It's to so say what doesn't kill us kills us makes us stronger. And uh, sometimes people think that that is a cliche, but it is. It's like mm -hmm. we become uh, more resilient um, in being able to handle those things. Then they, uh, they also mentioned uh, learning lessons uh, does, uh, uh, does not end. Uh, so we keep on going to have that. So it's, uh, it's, 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 um, it is our approach towards the, that that makes a difference. Because if we resist it, it's just going to be more intensified. If we go into it um, with our, I want to say, our spiritual gifts, our sort of truth, the shield of uh, um, knowledge and the, the armor of wisdom, when we take that into that lesson, into that experience, uh, we shift it. We, we, ma we master one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And then it's okay. It's all about our attitude. Attitude goes a long, long way. Then they also reminded that there is no better than um, or lesser than. And it's a, the, the old consciousness is better than lesser, lesser than. And we are moving more towards unity consciousness because we are unity. We are brothers and sisters of one another. I can remember when I just moved to Durban, I didn't know one soul. But I, I, I went with the attitude of, we are all spiritual family. We are all coming from the same place. So you just have to remember, uh, remember that you know me. <laughs> so I befriended, befriended, befriended people. Uh, no, no, some would ask, uh, and that's in the beginning of Facebook days. Do I know you from school? No. Do I know from? No. <laughs> but it's like, I just made friends. I just kept on making friends because ultimately we know one another. We just uh, have to, we're just playing this game again. And we just need to interact again. And so I did it from that attitude, not from, oh, I need to um, only have this. It's like Facebook, in the beginning of Facebook days, I only had to be friends with those that you are really friends. Then. If I don't have a friend, uh, what then? And I just uh, talk to myself. No, I know these people. <laughs> I like to break rules from time to time. <laughs> uh, because we have to bre break out of the crystallis. We have to break out of the norm. We have to do things differently. We can't do it as, I don't want to say, as we're told to do by other humans. It's like we have to find our own way. And we have to forge through those limitations or barriers and see what's on the other side we have to be like little children and adventurers when we approach this not oh um i've they created a box for me and now i must climb into the box and stay in the box no push down all the corners of the box all the layers it, it's it's we have to set ourselves free to have different experiences so they say, um, also one of the things uh, that uh, was said on that was, uh, others uh, are merely mirrors to us. And it is. We don't always like the mirrors. Sometimes I wonder, why do I have to see that mirror? 
that wasn't necessarily a pleasurable experience, really. And then I realized, okay, so okay, they were mirroring this. I can see now other the negative impact that, that being like that or doing that can be. I can now understand how it is receiving that energy. Um, so where am I controlling? Where did I try and control? Best not to control. Because there's certain things that we have no control over. Mm. And trying to control others is a futile exercise. We need to master um, just ourselves. Um, and not so much worry about others because if we are mirrors, when we, we, when, when we clear ourselves or clear our own mirror of the fog of the, of the illusions, when we stand in front of others, we actually then mirror. So to add to what Barbara is saying, it's like, so what can we do? All we can do is uh, be clear mirrors because the, the awakened part in me will awaken something in somebody else. We just need to clear our mirrors, to clear, uh, to become crystal clear. Crystal clear in our thinking, crystal clear in our beliefs, clearing our heart, clearing our mind. We have so much just to work on ourselves. And that is enough because that makes a difference. Uh, next point the, the, that was, uh, on that was uh, uh, what you make of your life is up to you. And it's a, like that parable said, it is um, the old energy was uh, God will and, uh, um, and we must just wait and whatever. And I can remember certain times when clients came to me and they said, no, um, uh, well, I had to do with stuff about healing and uh, if uh, they don't know why God gave them these experiences um, or it's like uh, they prayed to God for a man and then they got this man and uh, or this opportunity or this work or this, this and then they, they think, okay, but now God made them be and now they now they're ugly or now it turned out bad and um, now it's all God's fault and um, it will work out when God wants it to work out and whatever. But they keep on externalizing their own power to to God and it's a, and then they say okay, so they don't take responsibility to forgive. So they don't take responsibility for healing themselves. And they take that negative energy and they project it out and they keep on having these experiences. We will find healing. We will find things. So when we just work on ourselves, um, it's not waiting for God to take it away. It's discerning, okay, does this serve me? Do I want to continue this way? Or do I, do I want to exercise any other options? Some people don't believe that they've got options. They stop believing that they've got options. Um, or that it can be different. Um, so it's, we have to understand our responsibility and what we can do with these new gifts. Because when we ask, we are given. It's given. So do we ask or do we ask the right things? Yeah. Then the next point there, there was, um, uh, yeah, life is exactly what you think it is. And again, it, it, it reminds us of our thinking. So what are we thinking most of? Um, and it's to not just have empowering thoughts about ourselves, but also have empowering thoughts of others. I keep on seeing others as empowered because somebody has to. Um, so Somebody said, oh, but they, get the, um, they can't handle this. Then I keep on thinking, but they can. They can. I will be the one that believes that they can. Because it helps create that energy around them to empower them and to actually stand up and uh, act differently. And I've seen it. I, I, I've, I've seen it in experiences. People say, oh, this person is like this, this, this. Um, but around me, that person will be different. Um, cause I bring out the different energies in, in people. 
So, so what do you what do you bring to people? Do you bring uh, poor you? You can't do this, or um, you're a victim of this, or or do you? Okay, so what else is possible? What energies do you bring? Because that's that's going to help them. It's going to help them awaken, see see things differently. Somebody needs to be able to just show that, mirror that. And then another thing that it says is the answers lies within us. And it does. And it's like a cliche because we hear it lots. Um, but also the old energy is we don't know, so we have to go to somebody else that will know. But we know. So if we, if we truly get it, that, that we have these spiritual gifts of truth, knowledge, wisdom, we have it. I'm harboring on this because there's a reason. Because it's, it's, it's something to really get, to really understand. We have it. And when you tap into that, you are able to access that. And the more you do, the more comes to you. It's like a, a, a client that I saw this week. Um, he wanted to find out his life purpose. So I told him, you know. No, 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 no. I don't know. I really don't know. I've got no clue. No, I don't know. I told him, you know. No, 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 no. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> so I connected him and uh, he got his answers and um, it all came through to him. And um, after, after the session, he said, okay, I actually knew. <laughs> Didn't want to acknowledge this, but it's actually what I knew. Um, but I needed validation and I needed confirmation and I needed this. So when we connect on the inside, what we actually truly know is just validated for us. So it's, it's, it's to look at what do you say you don't know? What do you say you don't know how to handle or um, you can't or whatever? What is that? Because know that the opposite is actually the truth. Um, and it's to start looking looking at that um, start liberating yourself from that little things and then you're able to do it also for those around you. Um, I think also then, it's I, the people who think they know everything. They're the difficult ones. Yes, because the opposite is uh, true. <laughs> There's actually know. a lot that they don't know. <laughs> yes. Uh, and it's a, uh, when you, when uh, I, I totally understand. I totally hear you, Barbara. Um, yeah, it it's it's more from the humbled perspective of how much can I mine from this knowing than oh no 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 I know it all because then you close yourself off and you just stay with that belief systems that you have and then you actually can't you're not open to receive any any others. So yes, it's it's to go with the approach of um, how, how much more can I understand the openness of receiving the information? Because the knowing doesn't come from ego or from the mind. And uh, the, those that know it all just steps into uh, in, in, into into that. So they're not open to the higher knowledge and wisdom. There's different levels. And then it says, uh, go, we came here to forget. We came here in with forgetfulness, amnesia. And uh, many of us might have uh, struggled with it. And it's like, uh, also, okay, um, if, I, if I can't remember all these things, I choose to remember. So when I was spiritually awoken uh, many, many years ago, my affirmation I go, go. One of the ones that I started with is I choose to remember, I choose to remember, I choose to remember. I choose to remember who I was, why I came here, what my life purpose is. Because we have to, we have to tell ourselves what it is that we want to know. Because we can tap into a wide range of things. Whatever we focus on is we're going to get the, 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 that information. So what do you want to know? You have to tell your higher self. You have to tell your guides. You have to say, okay, I would like to know. I would like this information. And then trust that information. Work with that information. 
because as it says, uh, you can remember whatever you want at any time. And that's why I love my work because I help people remember, I help people connect so that um, they actually know what they know and they can trust it. So, yeah. Anybody like to share anything uh, on what we've discussed this morning? Make sense? Nonsense? Can relate? Don't want to relate? Because <laughs> there can be different opinions. Yes. So when you said anchor light, and so I want to know how exactly, or what do you mean by that? And the second question is. Again, um, just repeat the first question. I, I, I didn't hear clearly. The first question. Anchor light. Repeat that again. Anchor light. You mentioned about anchoring light. Uh, anchoring light. Okay, yes, yes. The second question is when you say portrait, like I have a, a general understanding of it, but how does one actually delve deeper into that? Delve deeper then? Into co creating. Oh, co, -cre co creating. Okay, so anchoring light and co creating. Those are two, the two questions. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'll start with anchoring uh, the light. So when, when we, how can I explain this? So we have this body and this body is uh, not just a physical vessel, um, we've got this physical body, then an emotional body, then a mental body, and then a spiritual body. We are conduits of light. So source is light. Source is love and light. Okay, but um, so when we 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 are channels, we are conduits. Conduit means that, that energy can come from and through you and then anchor it. So when in meditation you connect and you open up all your chakras and you connect, so you connect to your higher self of the light, then you connect with your crusted over self of the light, then your beloved I am presence and then God. It is all connections to the higher realms, so to source energy and it comes through your crown chakra, if you draw it through your chakras, through your feet, we anchor it into Mother Earth. So we become these pillars of light. We then, uh, when you bring in, that's why I, what they mean by bringing heaven on earth. We connect to the higher and then we bring it through us into the earth by grounding and anchoring that by our intentions, by visualizing that grounding cord like a root system of a strong tree and wrapping it around the crystal core of Mother Earth, you bringing that light through you as pillars of light into the earth. You then anchor more light, anchor more light. That light is also through you and with it's part of your light, okay? So when you need that, you can draw upon that because it is here on earth. It's, you're creating your own support system. You're creating your own light around you. And what um, Quran also says is that whatever we do is available not just for us, but it's available for our children and our children's children. So when I start, started learning about my keepership and what I bring to this earth plane, all I was told was just anchor and activate those rays that I bring. And I did. I did on, on a regular basis. Now I do things wholeheartedly, completely, with full trust and confidence. Okay, so I did it for, I think, three years or so, and then we were standing in a circle, um, and one of the um, one of the psychic fairs or 
life work affairs uh, in Durban. And there was people from Joburg. So we were standing in a circle and we all meditated and connected. And he came to me and he says, wow. He said, the, 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 the light that I've anchored underneath my feet was uh, like big. And he says he's never seen such a strong cord, such a strong um, energy because he, he can see energy from the different people. And, um, and he said, okay, what did I do? And so I just said, I anchor and activate on a regular basis with, with the light that I bring. Um, but it was nice to have validation because I do things trusting fully and then others will, will be able to see that. So it is uh, just to know that we can connect and bring the light and anchor it. And the more we do, the more light is available for us. Second question again, keyword. Co-creation. Co-creation, okay. Thank you for the reminder. So, co-creation is a way you do that, I want to say with the, um, with the fine print of, if it's for my highest good, if it's for the collective highest good. So, it's, when, when we take certain certain action steps and we say, okay, I want this. In old energy, people might have said, no, I have to conquer this and then I get the energy or then I get the praise or then I get this or I have to step on people and then I climb the corporate ladder. Um, that's not co-creating with spirit. It's like, okay, I, I would like acknowledgement. I would like this. I would like um, whatever you would like to experience, but still being for your highest good and for others' highest good. So you set the intent, but leave room for, 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 I want to say being sometimes pleasantly surprised. So co-creation would be, say for instance, you would, you would like a partner. Okay, I would like a partner that has these and these and these qualities that is leaving it open, uh, that, just, uh, that spirit can help you manifest that in the right timing when it's for your highest good, okay? Where if you say, no, I want that man. Ooh, I really want that man. It, okay, it can only be that man and um, not, not, nothing else. That might be your worst experience. That, uh, that might be um, something that is not good for you. Uh, it other won't manifest, or if it manifests, then you think, oh, fuck, okay. Maybe I didn't know what I wanted, or, okay. So co-creation is more work. It's, it's where you ask the lower mind than the lower ego to step aside, connecting with your higher self, and rather do, following a path where it's, 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 it's joint. It's like where I say, if, you, if you're on the right path, you can see the support for that. Is doors open for that? When you head in the wrong direction, you walk into a brick wall, and then you might think, no, but I want to get through this. That is your ego and, and wanting your will to, to be done. It's like when you align your will with the will of the divine and then work with that. So it's, it's um, not just me, myself, and I. It's like sitting in meditation and, and, and just contemplating on different things and say, okay, so um, what is it that I need to see that is right about this that I can't see at the moment? It's like I wanted um, accommodation um, and then everything was taken away from me where I was placed where I needed to be. And for the first time, fought against it. I didn't necessarily appreciate that. Now I do. Now I can see why. But it's to allow because we are always placed exactly where we are needed, where we need, where, what we need to do. Um, 
And it's to say, okay, so now that I'm here, what, what is right about this? What, what, what can I gain from this? Like, I have the general understanding of it, but now I like, I get more of a, yeah, a full understanding of that. But okay. the anchoring of life thing, I, I did not know. So yeah, thank you for that. Okay, you're welcome. I, I really appreciate the questions because then others are, that will listen to this will also understand. So it's, it's um, and I, I don't always get to share everything. So um, it's nice to be able to. It's, um, yeah, my take on that for now. Anybody else would like to add anything or share anything or ask anything? Okay. Ready for meditation then? <laughs>